G'day, welcome back. What we're doing in this step is installing a port. But before we do that, let's just have a little chat about what ports do. So ports form part of the base reflex design. And the base reflex design, it consists of a woofer, a cabinet, and a tube. So in terms of the port, it can be any shape. It can be a cylinder, it can be a rectangular tubular section. It could be some other wacky shape like an octagon tube if you wanted it to be. I would say circular ports are the most common because they're the most efficient at conserving volume within the cabinet for the same tuning frequency. When we use a port, what we're doing is we're creating a base reflex design. And the base reflex design, what it does is that you've got a cabinet, a sealed cabinet, and you've got a port in the back. And what the port does is it allows the speaker to play a lot lower bass. And the way that it does that is that the port will resonate at a certain frequency. So for instance, in this speaker, uh, we're using a five inch woofer and we've got a cabinet volume of around about 12 liters. And then we're using a port and what's happening is that as the speaker drive is vibrating inside the speaker box, putting uh, a pressure differential inside, it's creating the port to resonate. And the frequency that resonates is directly proportionate to the volume and also the port length and the diameter. So if we have a narrow port, like a less uh, width, we can have the port to be shorter, but if we have a wider port, it needs to be longer in order to achieve the same resonance frequency. The reason why we've chosen this diameter, and not a really thin one, is that if you use a really thin port where the diameter is not very wide, you can get a thing called chuffing, where the air moves through um, the port at such a velocity that it becomes turbulent and it's no longer like a laminar flow. And that can be that chuffing sound that can be pretty annoying to listen to. In addition, the port length also changes as we change the volume of the cabinet. So if we had a bigger cabinet volume, we could have a shorter port to get the same tuning frequency. So you're probably wondering right now then, why do we have this volume and not something that's bigger? Large volumes are great, because what it does is it allows us to dig really deep, but it comes at a price. It means that the woofer can move a lot. You've got to work really hard and a lot of exertion will occur at base frequencies which means that you're um, at risk of blowing the woofer even at low volumes. So I've found 12 litre to be a really nice compromise between base extension and power handling. Base reflect design is probably the most common type of um, cabinet arrangement you see in hi-fi or in an audio in general actually, because it's a great way to get deep bass. But there are some instances where you'd use a sealed cabinet and sealed cabinets are great at limiting the exertion of this um, woofer, which in turn limits how much it can move. Base reflect design don't have that um, effect. So below the tuning frequency, the woofer can move freely as if there's no box at all. So that's the compromise with base reflect designs is that they do have a limitation with power handling. So when we start getting really low in frequency, like really bass heavy music, you'll notice that if you start to push the volume really high, you're at risk or what you hear, you, you'll first hear the woofer going too hard where it's you know, bottoming out, a lot of distortion. When you push it a little bit harder, then you'll blow the speaker driver. But we're talking in excess of 100 watts, which can be pretty damn loud for um, most home environments. So to do this step, what we're gonna need is we're gonna need two speaker cabinets. So you wanna have your speaker cabinet completely finished, like all the varnish, and if you've got any wax on it, uh, make sure you put that on uh, before you do this step. What you want, your two ports, a hot glue gun, a glue stick, and sandpaper. The reason why we're using a hot glue gun is that so we can glue the port in. These ports are designed not to be glued in, but the glue, what it does is that it makes sure that these don't come out and it also seals the port. We wanna make sure our speaking cabinets are sealed. If we don't seal them, we're gonna lose the amount of base that the port gonna produce. So it's really important that we've got a good seal. In terms of glue, I find hot glue to work really well. It's super strong, it's easy to apply, and it's not very messy. You can use PVA glue or you can use silicon, but I'm gonna show you how to use a hot glue gun in this step. Because we're working with the finished speakers, we don't wanna dent them, so make sure you're working on something soft. We're also gonna use sandpaper so that we can roughen up the areas where the glue is gonna go. So because this is plastic and quite smooth, we're gonna sand it so that we get good adhesion with the glue, so particularly just around this flange area. And we're also gonna sand in here as well. So making sure there's no varnish on the speaker cabinet or um, wax where the port can glue to. 
I would also like to note that because we're working with timber, it can uh, contract and expand. So you might find that your port's a little bit tight. If it is, just get a bit of sandpaper on the port and sand down the areas where it might be tight. It's usually the ribs that are too um, large when the timber um, contracts. So you can just sand these down a bit until it gets a nice fit. If it is tight, just to identify where the oversize is. So if I put that there, I can see that mine just a little bit tight. So if I wanted to, I could just, which I, actually I will do this because it will make it fit a lot more neatly. Get your sandpaper, put sandpaper like that and just sand the outside. That will take the outside flange down in diameter. But you also might find that your ribs are a little bit um, too wide as well. So just sand each individual one until you get a good fit if it is tight. But remember, don't over sand because you want to keep a nice arm um, fit. You don't want this port to become too small. And once you've done that, sand the outside of the flange here and making sure that make it rough. You just don't want it to be shiny. Get rid of that shine and make it all matte. Then get your sandpaper and we want to sand around in here. Just remove any varnish, just lightly sand, making sure you don't sand your cabinet because you put scratches in it otherwise. Just take your time when you're doing this. You really don't want to rush it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to apply a hot glue in here. We really want to work fast with this. We don't want to take too long because it will um, set on us. If it sets before we get our port in there, we're not going to get good adhesion and the port probably not going to sit flat. So it's really important to work fast. If you do accidentally take too long, then what you can do is just wait, let the glue go hard and then get like a, something sharp or even your fingernails and just scrape off the hot glue and start again. And I've also got another glue stick on hand. So if I use it all up, I can just quickly chuck it in without having to go and look for another one. Make sure your glue gun is really hot. I've left mine on for 10 minutes and uh, you can see it's just starting to smoke on the tip which shows how hot it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add glue in onto the flange and I'm sort of staying quite close to the edge because I don't want too much of the glue to squirt out onto the um, job. So I'm staying close to the hole. I had a little bit of glue squirt out from the side. I'm just going to use my fingernail just to scrape it off. And that looks really neat. I'm pretty happy with that. I might actually just put a little bit of wax over that and just buff it back as well so it just blends it in nicely. If you feel that your port's a little bit higher and you can run your hands over it, you can if you want to be really fussy and uh, make it uh, flush. You use a bit of sandpaper. But if you're going to use that, make sure you use it on like a hard block. Get yourself a hard bit of wood. Wrap your sandpaper over it and very carefully just sand over the port and avoid sanding your speaker. Do it wet as well. That way um, you'll limit any scratches. But yeah, I haven't done that and it, it's really nice. It's, um, you know, it's, it's not quite flush, it's a little bit of a lip, but to me that's, that, that's really nice. One, another thing is that if you do have a gap and you want to fill it, you can use wood filler. And if you're going to do that, just find some filler that matches to your timber. So I've got pine, which is very similar to the bleach Adler. Just to finish off, I'm going to add some wax over it just to make it look really tidy. Mm -hmm. 